The word is exothermic. Exothermic is actually a reaction or a process that gives out a lot of thermal energy. An exothermic reaction or process is one that gives out heat. So if you mix the chemicals very, very slowly, it all just gets pleasantly warm. If you mix them too fast, there's a big bang. And there are many, many, many examples where people have mixed things too fast and either had a small bang or blown up their whole factory. So to illustrate that, what I thought is actually to do a reaction that demonstrates a truly exothermic process. So rather than doing a reaction that generates a lot of, I don't know, colour change, uh, sound in terms of an explosion, you know, th there are other vi videos that show that really well. So this exothermic process, while it's not a spectacular sum, um, hopefully you should see the temperature um, increase dramatically. The rate of reaction when you're doing exothermic reaction is very important. And what is really important is that if you have a small flask, like this one, the heat can get out quite easily because there's just quite a lot of surface area. But then if you take something really big, much bigger, the surface area is proportionately smaller, so the heat can't get out so easily. So when chemists scale up, make things on a larger scale, that's when things can go wrong. It's just like on a cold day, if you're thin, you wrap up really warm to keep out the cold. But your really fat friend is running around in a t-shirt saying it's too hot and sweating like a pig because the fat friend's surface area is much smaller compared to the volume than yours is. So what we have here is something called calcium oxide. You can see it's in an interesting kind of container, not a glass container, um, and it says to open it carefully. So if I pop that there. Exothermic reactions are quite safe. Just feel your body, it's warm. It's warm because it's an exothermic reaction. The food that you are eating, the oil from your crisps is reacting with that oxygen in the air and letting out heat in a gentle way. But if you set fire to the oil in the kitchen, you can burn the house down because the reaction is going to higher temperature and so much faster. So calcium oxide looks pretty much like any other form of calcium salt. It's a white solid. So what we'll do is put some of it in here. Okay, so we've got about half a beaker's worth of calcium oxide there, so approximately about 100 grams. So the thermocouple at the moment is at room temperature, and so room temperature is about 15 and a half degrees C, and it's, even though it's inside the calcium oxide, the temperature is about the same as the fume cupboard in the room. So what we're going to do now is add some distilled water to the beaker, and we'll see what happens to the thermocouple. So immediately you're seeing the increase in temperature. So it's gone from 15, shot all the way up now to 45, and it's still going strong. When a chemical reaction occurs, you have to start the reaction to break bonds between atoms. Then they react, and they make new bonds, and you get some energy back. If the energy you get back is more than the energy you put in, it gets hotter. So the reaction goes faster, it releases more energy, and it runs away, it goes faster and faster and faster. But if, on the other hand, you are breaking strong bonds and making weak ones, less energy comes out than you put in, and you have to keep on heating it or the reaction just stops. Within seconds it's gone from 15 and a half degrees C to over 100. So with this beaker, I'm definitely not going to touch it because it's going to be really hot. So the, this reaction is known as the, the slaking of quicklime. So it's calcium oxide and water producing calcium hydroxide. 